So to look at the buoyancy uh, associated with like a hot air balloon, um, we need to actually create a hot air balloon. That would be hot air. And that would be a balloon. So always need to be careful on the first little bit associated with this so you don't actually turn the balloon fabric. But as you're watching this proceed, you should notice that the balloon becomes more and more, hopefully, buoyant. So it and fills up with the hot combustion gases from the thing. I can actually lower it completely down. And so what I'm doing, of course, is I'm just filling up the balloon with hot air uh, that from the combustion, uh, from the burner that's down below. And as it fills up, I'm feeling it actually kind of tugging up away on, on the ring that I have down below. So at some point in time, if I were to just let go of the ring, and my hot air balloon floats up. Now, as it cools, of course, it becomes less buoyant and does something like that. So I can bring it over here and it settles back down. So you constantly have to keep the gases heated because if you look at it, it's a very large surface area, okay, that the hot gases are in. It's not really well insulated because you want it to be as thin and as light as possible. So the gases ultimately do radiate, the balloon ultimately radiates the energy of the gases quite quickly. And if I let it sit there and hold it for a few more seconds, what ends up happening is I end up with something that is actually fairly buoyant. There we go. And so that's just an example of buoyancy simply done. There we go. And just to see what the air temperature is here, I'm just gonna go like, didn't burn your face. Didn't burst into your eyebrows or anything to that effect. So it wasn't that warm. It was warm, but it wasn't ultimately hot, right? Ultimately, if it was really hot, it would melt the fabric of my very inexpensive uh, garbage can, garbage bag.